Hello everyone and welcome back to this ML flow series. Uh, in this session I will show you how easy it is to uh, to use MLflow projects and models. So let's start by a quickly recap of uh, these two MLflow modules. And as I explained in the in the first video of this series, MLflow projects consists in essentially containerizing or package package your MLflow, uh, your, your machine learning uh, projects. If you have worked with uh, Docker before, the concept is very sim similar as it basically encapsulates all the dependencies so it can be run in any machine. Uh, the, the folder structure of a MLflow project consists of, uh, you basically need to have uh, two uh, crucial par uh, files. The first one, MLflow, uh, the first one, sorry, ML project, you can see here. And it's basically where you will define the entry point, the ML flow, the workflow, sorry. Um, and also the, the code environment path. And the second file that you really need to have is this conda YML file, which is where you will actually uh, define the, the code environment dependencies. Um, and then the, the MLflow models module is very similar in its concept, in its motivation. Basically, uh, this time you, you package a, a model. Uh, you essentially can, can use any machine learning framework. And after you have uh, packaged or containerized this model, you you can load this model using two two ways or two flavors as MLflow calls it. Uh, you can load it using uh, a Python function, or actually using the the flavor that you have used to build this uh, this model, which in this case uh, was TensorFlow. And MLflow projects and models are essentially this. So. Um, now, now the the first thing I I should remind you is to to download uh, my GitHub repository. I will leave the the link in the description of this video. Here you have one folder for each part of this ML MLflow series. But uh, the folder that we will need for this part is is uh, this folder, part two, MLflow projects and models. Inside you have a brief description of what we will do and uh, the notebook that we will explore and then yeah you also have other things that are, I will uh, talk about them in uh, an appropriate time so now that you have downloaded or at least I hope you did uh, this repo you you need to import the notebook in Databricks so let's do it import browse let's choose part 2 notebook and it's this uh, file with the extension dbc import okay let's open it okay so uh, here you see a brief uh, description of how we can run projects. Essentially, MLflow includes an API and command line tools for running projects. Um, and here you can see an example of how a ML, ML project uh, looks like. And I have actually here the link for the project that uh, that I created and the one that that we will be using for for the scope of this session. Uh, Okay, I can open it for uh, just to show you. Okay, basically we have here the ML project file. Basically we define uh, the path to the conda environment, the entry points, and uh, this project is very simple. Simple, but we could have uh, here define a whole bunch of workflows, but for the sake of simplicity, we we will stick to the 
to the sim simplest uh, project possible. Then we have the Conda YML, which is where you you can see that we have defined all the the dependencies that we that we have. Okay, so yeah, now I just want to tell you that you you don't really need to to create this Conda file all by yourself. If you have watched my last video, you will notice that in the MLflow user interface, uh, an artifact of the model was was created or, or generated, and it contains this Conda file, among other things. Uh, so I think I just I can quickly show you. We have run this notebook, so it should be here. Yeah, if we open the user interface. Okay, if we pick an experiment like this one, and if we go here, inside this folder, we have here the Conda, the Conda um, YML file. And we actually also have other files, but in this case, we I just wanted to show you that you don't need to do the Conda YML file all by yourself uh, if you have run your model uh, before using MLflow. You can actually go here and uh, copy copy the content of this file. Okay, so let's go back to to where we were. Projects run project. Okay, now that we uh, actually know how to create a project, let's let's run it. And first, we need to import the the required libraries. But actually, before that, we need to attach the cluster. And now we can run this cell. And yeah, you can see that the MLflow version that we are using is 1.0. Now we need. The, the second thing that we need to do is uh, to configure a token on the remote machine on the cluster on the cluster in this case uh, this is something that you only need to do here on databricks remotely if you are running locally in your machine uh, this step is not required um, and before running this cell I just want to warn you that uh, this this link here that you can see here is this one the same that we are right now so if you are running this notebook you should be aware of this little detail and let's run it okay now you just need we just need to uh, to define our set of parameters of parameters over which we will uh, iterate the the project uri um, yeah, and now we just need basically to to call the model to run. So let's execute this cell. Yeah, and actually I forgot to mention, but we uh, we have two ways of run this this ML project. We can use a MLflow Fluent API or <clears throat> the MLflow Project API. the The output will be exactly the same, so I will just opt to to run this first this first cell okay and uh, this will take some some time to to finish executing uh, so i will pause this video and come back once it, uh, once it's finished okay so it finally finished running and now i just want to to show you to quickly show you the mlflow user interface so you can see the results and then also the artifact and the conda yml file that it has pro probably created if everything has went okay uh, here you can see uh, some parameters and the accuracy it's very similar uh, as strange as it might seem again the, the experiments with only three epochs went better only three epochs and two uh, and the size equal to of the convolutional filter it had a slightly better accuracy 
uh, it's not that strange at all because uh, even 10 epochs is still a very very low number so uh, uh, things like this can can happen for sure so let's open one experiment yeah, and here in, in the artifacts inside the mod, uh, model folder you can see the um, the conda the conda yml file so now that we uh, know how to create uh, mlflow projects and how to run them and how to call it and so on at least in databricks uh, now i i like to to show you how to to do basically the the same thing but locally uh, in your machine uh, so first let's go to the to the ml to this project part two okay here you can see this file pro um, run project And it's basically the the same thing that we that that we did in Databricks, but now you don't, we don't need to configure the the token. Uh, we have the parameters defined, the ML project URI, and then basically we just run uh, we just run the the model. Okay, so let me open here uh, a terminal. Basi basically, you know, we just need to to run this file. So Python run projects dot py and yeah, it's running. Hopefully, it will be um, a lot faster to to finish executing than uh, remotely uh, in Databricks. But still, it will take a lot of time, so I will I will pause the video and return once it's uh, really finished. Okay, so it's finally completed now, and I'd like to show you now how you can actually open MLflow UI, the user interface, uh, locally in your machine. And before that, uh, let me just show you that while we were running uh, MLflow uh, locally, uh, it created this folder named ML runs, where it's actually uh, where uh, the required files and content for the user interface will be stored. So now we can just do mlflow UI, and uh, I think it will, yeah, prepare things for us. We can just open this this local URL, open link. Yeah, and yeah, you, we, we can see here uh, everything, the, the metrics and so on, and probably here also the artifact and the conda file. And, and that's it. Uh, I really hope that at least you understand better how e easy it is to create and run uh, a MLflow project. Uh, this, actually, the same logic could be applied uh, in order to create and run MLflow model. So for the sake of simplicity, I I didn't do it. Uh, however, uh, it could be a great exercise for you to to practice. Um, that said, thank you very much uh, for watching this video, and I really hope to see you in the next session, where I will show you how to register a model, a very crucial part uh, of MLflow.